Hi guys, it's John from Android Addicts and this is a battery drain test for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So we'll start the timer now and basically these are obviously the Ultra model with the 5000 mAh battery. We've got the Exynos 2200 here on the left and the Snapdragon here on the right. And what we're going to do is just run through various tests which I have put on the screen and also down below in the description so you can quickly jump to any part of the video that you wish. But we'll see how long these can both last with phone calls, recording video, playing games and apps and yeah, basically just see how much life we can get out of them. So we'll start off with the phone call now and I'm going to put these on a stand rather than have them lying down just so the heat can dissipate a bit better. So I will start the phone call now. Now don't forget we've got the floating battery widget in the top of the screen here. We've also got the floating temperature widget over here which is going to be showing us how hot these are both going. So currently Exynos is at 30 and Snapdragon is at 29. So I'm just going to rearrange these and put them up right and then we'll skip through the rest of the video with a bit of commentary on top and we'll just see how they both do. I have got these both set to be 3G, 4G or 2G as you can see at the top there. So what we're going to do, just move these out now and we'll carry on with the test. Okay then, so here we are with the 30 minute phone call test. So these were both running on the H plus network, which is about 4G speed. It's not uh, not proper full 4G, but uh, after 30 minutes on H plus on both phones, they used 3% each. So that's a nice even start for both of them. I'll then move on to the video recording test here. So this is 30 minutes at 4K resolution at 30 frames per second as well. And just keep an eye on the temperature here, the Snapdragon they start off around the same, getting up to about 30, but then the Snapdragon does start to increase slightly more than the Exynos does. So it's always running a tiny bit warmer during video recording compared to the Exynos 2200, which is basically completely the opposite of what we had last year with the 2100. So after 30 minutes of video recording, the Exynos used 11% and the Snapdragon used 13%, so that's an additional 2% for the Snapdragon. And what I did is I jumped the gun a bit and went into PUBG briefly, but I forgot the next test was actually the standby test. With the accidental load of PUBG for about five minutes or so, the Exynos used another 2% battery and the Snapdragon an extra 1%. So this is the standby test with just 30 minutes with the always on display turned on. And we can see here that after this has run, they both use 1% battery, so not bad at all. I guess it's 2% an hour, which isn't ideal, but uh, it's not uh, the end of the world. I would like to see that down to 1% per hour though, that would be a lot nicer. So anyway, on to PUBG now. So I did have these both on the same graphic settings as always. So they were both set to smooth and high graphics for this test because that is the max I can select on the Exynos at the moment. Hopefully the devs will release an update to fully support the Exynos in the near future. It does always take a bit of a while for updates to come out sadly, but we will get there in the end. So yeah, this is using Clickmate just to get the characters to run around and spin around and jump and do things. Just to keep the processors busy, we don't want it just sat there or stood there doing nothing because I have checked and the CPU usage and GPU usage when you're doing that is pretty minimal. So yeah, as long as your character's running around and doing stuff, the CPU and GPU are being used. So after an hour of PUBG, the Exynos used 12% and the Snapdragon used 14%. And again, look at the temperatures here. They're running about the same, about 28 degrees each throughout the test. So not too bad. You can tell when a game's nicely optimised, it doesn't heat up the phone too much. So next up we're on to the complete opposite of PUBG, which is a game which isn't well optimised for mobile particularly, and that's Genshin Impact. So this is 60 minutes, and this one we're just spinning around in circles because that taxes the CPU and GPU quite a bit. So we've got a good hour of spinning around for you to watch here, but basically at the end of this, there's a big jump. This is always the biggest drain on battery. So the Exynos lost 23% and the Snapdragon lost 29% overall. And again, look at the temperatures here. You can see the Snapdragon running at 37 compared to the Exynos, which is just running at 34 degrees. So there's a huge difference here and it's just popped up to 38 as well now on the Snapdragon 
gone back down to 37, but yeah, three or four degrees difference in temperature, which is uh, partly the downfall of the Snapdragon in this test. It does always get quite a bit hotter than the Exynos. Just to note that the room temperature was around 20 degrees or so, 20 degrees Celsius that is, throughout this test, so that might give you an idea as to what you could expect in your own environment. Next up we've got a browser test here. So this is something that someone suggested in one of my previous videos, which is doing a jet stream test. So this just tests the JavaScript speed and functionality of your browser basically. And it runs multiple tests and basically taxes the CPU to see exactly how fast the browser can render pages and do all sorts of bits and pieces. But you can see here the overall result is that the Snapdragon is much faster than the Exynos in the browser test at least. And this was just running for 30 minutes and it used up 10% on the Exynos and 13% on the Snapdragon. But again, you can see here that the Snapdragon is at the moment two degrees warmer than the Exynos. And yeah, it's, it's a strange turn of events compared to last year's chipsets, which were completely opposite, whereas we had the Exynos always running hotter than the Snapdragon. Next up, we move on to an hour of Instagram Reels. And this is again, 60 minutes of constant scrolling so you can't really just leave your phone on a single video and have it as a fair test i don't think in a battery test you've really got to carry on loading new videos constantly because otherwise your wi-fi is not being used and you know your cpu is not really being used because it's not doing anything so we're constantly scrolling up and up and up to load new videos and after 60 minutes the exynos used 12 percent of battery and the snapdragon used 13 percent So we can see here the Snapdragon is really struggling to keep up battery wise with the Exynos and this is what I've experienced in my own you know just day-to-day -day use of the Snapdragon. It does use the battery a lot quicker than the Exynos as you can see here we're at 27 and 14 so that's a huge difference there between the two which is a bit of a shock really I wasn't expecting it to be quite this different between them. We're now 12% difference in battery life between the two. But yeah, the Snapdragon keeps on uh, keeps on going down, sadly. Don't forget these are both set with auto brightness turned off and they're set at 50% brightness. So it's as fair as I can make it, really. We've now moved on to Reddit, which I hadn't actually realized. And yeah, 60 minutes of Reddit. And this is where we say goodnight to the Snapdragon, sadly. But the Exynos just keeps on going. Still at 21% at the moment, which is quite amazing, really. We're at six hours, nearly at the six and a half hour mark here. So the Snapdragon has now gone into the low power mode with 5% remaining after six and a half hours. Okay, and there we have it, six hours and 32 minutes for the Snapdragon and the Exynos still has 19% battery remaining, which is uh, quite uh, incredible really, if you ask me. So we're coming to the end of Reddit now and we finished on 15% which means it used up 11% for an hour of Reddit. And obviously the, well we didn't quite get to an hour of Reddit for the Snapdragon but it did use 13% to the last bits of what it had remaining. So next up I moved on to YouTube. So we've got 60 minutes of YouTube now just loading videos constantly in a playlist. Now I did set this to be high quality video because sadly the new app is not very good and you have to always set it to be high quality for some reason. So yeah, this is set to high quality video. So we're reaching basically an hour of extra screen on time here for the Exynos at 7.32 and we've still got 9% remaining. Okay, so after an hour of YouTube, I moved on to TikTok and we lasted another few minutes here before we finally died. 
Okay, and there we are, eight hours and one minute for the Exynos. So basically, there's a one hour and 31 minute difference here between the two, which is quite substantial, really, if you ask me. As I said originally, I have noticed that the Exynos has been really, really good with its battery life. Not saying six and a half hours of screen on time is bad. That's still pretty good for the Snapdragon, but when you compare it to eight hours, it uh, doesn't really uh, compare that well. So we can see here in the table that I've created here, a list of all the tests and exactly how much battery is used, just so you can have a quick look. But yeah, let me know your thoughts down below and yeah, hopefully enjoy this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. It really does help out. And I've got a camera test coming soon as well. So be sure to hit the bell notification to be notified when that gets released. Now I'm sure these are all things that can be fixed in the Snapdragon. Hopefully with some additional updates, they can fix the sort of battery draining issue here that we seem to have. It just seems to be getting a lot hotter than the Exynos is. Okay, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.